open the page. I don't want to hear you say that. Put that umbrella around the to take it off you. Warum? What can two early years teachers gain from observing each other's lessons? Yeah, you can go in a three, that's fine. John Bailey has come to Hamilton Primary School in Colchester to work with recently qualified reception teacher Laura Green and her line manager, Lois Eaves. Oh, let me see who my super sitters are. Thank you, Oliver and Harrison. Both teachers are going to observe each other's lessons. First, Lois sits in on Laura. OK. So we noticed something on the board. Did one of you put this here, then? No, we didn't. You must have done. Should I take it off? Oh, it's got a label on the front. What is it? Open it up. Probably it's potent. Do you think it might be important? <gasps> oh, my goodness. What do you think it is? Thank you, Tiffany. It says, Dear children, please, can you help me? My husband, the giant, has gone missing. <gasps> oh, my goodness. It's Laura puts a strong focus on developing the children's emerging writing skills. I was busy doing the but the big challenge is how to motivate them to write independently. <gasps> bit strange. We've got a letter from the giant's wife. What are we going to do about this? Today, she's trying out a new idea. She's written here, look, at the end, I'm very worried about him and I'm hoping that you might be able to help me to find him. Now, how are we going to do that? What are we going to have to do, do you think? Jensen? He's near his house. Every day we could be quiet and listen for the giant. Oh, we could listen. Do you think he might be around and... around near the school, then? Yeah. He might be around near school. Oh, I want you to think about what we're going to do to let the giant's wife know that we can help her. What are we going to have to do? How can we communicate back with the giant's wife? What can we do about this? Yeah. Katie, you had some good ideas. What do you think we could do? We could write a card. We could write a card. Arizona, what did you say we could do? Write a letter. Write a letter. Well I thought Thank that was you. great. They don't seem to think it's all that out of the ordinary that they should get a, a letter from the giant's wife um, asking for help. But it's a nice twist. They get enthusiastic about it. And so they have, uh, they have something to write about and they have enthusiasm for doing it and you give them a lot of frameworking. We can help you find... Who are we looking for? Giant. The giant. I think you needed to model the letter like you did. Mm. Although yeah. some of them started to get a little fidgety, they were still looking at you and they're still listening, and I think they needed that before they could then go and have a go at writing themselves. Can't Group, I'd like you to go very carefully to the little yellow table. So the rest of you, you've got some choices. You can go to the writing corner to write your letter. You can go to the snack table. It's your choice. Off you go. And then when they went off to their activities, you know, everyone was on task. Everyone went and chose something immediately. There wasn't anyone kind of wandering around, not sure what to do. Oh, wow, Connie, what does it say? D. There was a lot of concentration. I saw a lot of children mm. making their marks with great care. They were very interested in posting the letters and great mm. device and all that. That's pretty good. And then there are some aspects of what you're seeing that are exemplary. Who can tell me what it is they've been doing in our literacy learning? Harrison, can you tell me what you were doing? I was writing a letter to the giant. Oh, excellent. I wonder if I can... Have you put... Have you, what have you done with your letter now? I pasted it in the letterbox. In the letterbox. Wow, there's lots of things in here. And I think some people have also put some... Whoa, there's lots and lots. It's really full up. Oh, <laughs> did you forget to put it in, Joseph? <laughs> well done. <laughs> That's enthusiasm, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's so exciting, wasn't it? Dear giant's wife, I want to help you from 
Harrison. And he's tried really carefully with his letters. What did we say that you might need to do next time, Harrison? Can you remember? I need to make them smaller. Why do you need to make your letters a bit smaller? So they can fit on the line. Good boy, because some of your words end up going onto the next line, don't they? And we keep one word on a line. So Harrison That's absolutely brilliant, that because that, that's kind of a perfect full literacy circle, isn't it? You've generated some enthusiasm, they've gone off and done some writing. And then when you get to the end of the time, um, this child already understands criterion reference learning yeah. uh, and understands what he needs to do to be able to take things further. Nicely. How are you in the writing? Now it's Lois's turn to be observed by Laura. Wow, are you going to write something? I'm going to write Emily. Are you? Yes. Wow. You know, just very nice. oh, done it. Done it. Lois gives her class clear reminders to move on to new activities. Well done for stopping. If you've only been to one area, I would like you to move on now to a different area. So if you've only just been on the laptops, could you move to somewhere else? Or if you've only been to the writing area, could you move to a different area now? Off you go. One thing that I thought was really good, which I know I should do more of, is when you stop them, you got them all to listen to you. And, OK, some of them didn't move on, mm -hmm. but it was great that then some of the other children who had been there for a little while did move on. Yeah. And um, that's something I would definitely, you know, try and remember to do next time. Is it a tambourine that you use? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I like the way I, you inject it. I, I, I suppose I call it gentle pace. Mm. Um, so, you're, as you say, you're letting children know when there's time for a transition. Yeah. Let's do some solution focusing this afternoon. If both your classes were running in uh, outstanding ways, uh, what would we see in here that would be different from now? Perhaps we should involve the children in the, the planning a bit more mm. in what they want to learn, because as we noticed today, you know, they wanted to write the letters and they were really infused and mm. it got them in the writing area. So I think perhaps getting them involved more will get them enthusiastic that, yeah. that bit more. I wonder if there's somewhere we could set up like planning teams or something because I think sometimes if you've got like the whole class all throwing ideas at you it could be very difficult and they especially at this age they find it difficult don't they to kind of compromise. <laughs> I wonder if there's somewhere we could work it so mm -hmm. each each kind of fortnight a different group listen to everyone's ideas and then that team feed back with what they've got and then yeah. we put that into our planning perhaps. Yeah no, that's, that's a good idea. The other thing was us being more active in the role play side. Mm. Um, because I said I noticed the children do go in the role play area, but they're it's usually the same children and they're always doing the same thing. Yeah. Can I buy this please? Okay, you can. Don't forget I have to give you money, Joe, before you give me my change. Observing children interacting with the LSA inspires Laura to get more involved herself. In your lesson, it was fantastic and what the children were getting out of it. There were so many children in that role-play corner because mm. there wasn't an adult in there. Yeah. Is there somewhere outside we can buy things? Yes. In there? Oh, we could go to Tesco's and buy something. Where can we go and pretend to buy something at school at the moment? Um, in the garden! In the garden centre! Do I buy things in here, indoors? Yeah. Inside the shop? Oh, OK, I'll go and have a look round and then I'll come back. And then I got a bag from that table and said, oh, right, I'm going to come and buy something now. And I got so much out of that. We don't necessarily always need to be, like you say, working with a group. Mm. Sometimes it's a bit scary, I don't know, to, because you feel like you need to be focusing on them and helping them to move on with different areas of their learning. Mm. But actually, you can do that really well if you interact yeah. with them in the role play as well. And like you say, we, we do do it. I think yeah, it's I being think a bit do. more Just... conscious to plan in yeah. to do it more often. I think, um, yeah. Perhaps especially when we first set up the role-play yeah. area and they're not really sure how to use it. When an adult's involved in role-play, what's the link between that and making marks on a page? I think that having those opportunities in the role-play corner to really, you know, understand what it is to speak and listen with someone and understand a story will hopefully excite them and make them, even if they I can only mark make, will give them that opportunity to think, yes, I want to go and try and write something. Mm. <laughs> It's just, you know, making sure we're consistently enabling that, I suppose. And I think, as you've, as you've said, us getting in the role-play corner with them as well and modelling to them how they do that will really help, particularly for those children that aren't so confident at doing those things. OK, I understand that now. 
And then leading into that is also making time to interact with them in other areas, not just the role play area, but during their play. Um, and that ties in with making observations. Mm. I said, I think we need to plan in more time for us to make those observations. Definitely. I mean, I have to say, when I came into your class, it was great to be an observer and to really feel that I didn't have to worry about any of the teaching side of it, but I could mm. really go around and just wander around and see, see some of your children. And sitting and really talking to them. Stop. Oh, You're writing the story, how are you? That's a good day. How, good idea. How are you going to start your story? I'm trying to write words, but I don't know what's after word. What other sounds can you hear? It does sound like a word, doesn't it, in once? Yeah. You see if you can tell me what sounds you can hear, and then I'll help you with how you write it. What? Uh, once, once. What sounds can you hear? I think it was Eddie, wasn't it, who started doing his writing. Yeah. He'd really tried to sound out once, but then we really talked about it and just sitting with him and giving that bit more mm. and questioning him further, you get so much more out of it. Perhaps we could use our LSAs more and they could yeah. be running the kind of teaching the group. side, yeah. the group work, and we could be as you like, the LSAs moving yeah. around making the observations. We could swap roles that's, every yeah, so often really so we can idea. stand back and, yeah. and do that. Yeah. The quality of the conversation between you and the child is different when you don't feel the pressure to deliver. Yeah, you're, I think that's I the think, word, isn't I it, pressure? So. Yeah, yeah and, that's and, it. And so, you're, and so in that moment, you're... It sounds corny, but you're there for the child. Mm. And it's, the fact that it, it, it turns you into an observer. Yeah, you really yeah. see what's going on, don't you, in the whole classroom. Any children that aren't on, on, on task or... Any that are sort of a bit lost. The other things, the plenary, um, ensuring that we always have time for the plenary so mm. that we can, or the children can feed back as to their learning and where they need to go next. Yeah. I think we do, it, sometimes it is hard again. It is. Again, isn't it? Sometimes you get to the end of the session, you look up and think, mm. oh my goodness, half of them haven't eaten a snack and it's yeah. a bit of a rush to get them through. But I really like that time to actually talk with them and I think mm. they really benefit from that and they seem to enjoy it and they like that opportunity to come and share their work all the evidence shows you know we could we could probably improve education nationally if we could if we could ring a, a mm. bloody great big national bell <laughs> uh, ten minutes before the end of every yeah. lesson and say stop it and mm. start doing the plenary stuff uh, good boy that's the ch sound well, Lois and Laura agree oh, that there have been four key insights from their peer observation okay, okay, to involve children in the planning to model more active role play to allow time for observations and a plenary, and above all, to take more risks. All over the country for the last 20 years, whenever teachers talk about doing something experimental, you used the word, you used the fear earlier on. There's always the fear. What is the fear? As, any, as always, targets, you know, reaching those targets, and unless you're sitting down pushing those children, um, are you actually going to be reaching those targets? That's a... It's, it is hard to know, isn't it? If you just, if you do take too much time out and just do the role play thing with them and you know interacting with them and then the observations, then they're not having any modelled writing experiences from an adult. So therefore, how are they going to move on in that sense as well? I mean, it's just getting a balance, really, isn't it? And you've got to think long term, and you've got That's to think it's going to be several weeks ahead before it, mm. it starts clicking into place. And oh yes, we've done all this speaking, listening. Yeah, let's now go and write. So that involves um, some iron conviction on your part. It's just taking part, a risk, it? really, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah. just...